What is a JPEG? Well, basically, a JPEG is used to compress images so that they are smaller. But in doing that, when it makes them smaller, it throws away colors. When it throws away colors, it mixes colors that are similar and puts them together. And essentially, what happens is it causes extra banding. So you see lines that run across an image. So basically, what it's doing here is it's taking similar colors, throwing them away, and that makes the file size smaller. But when it does that, not only does it add banding, it also adds uh, pixelization. And what you end up seeing are little squares of color. Let me give you an example. This image here was originally a raw image, meaning it came out of a camera as little ones and zeros. It went through the raw processor, but I saved it as a JPEG. So it saved as a JPEG once. Now that's important to remember. Only once was this image saved as it came out. So I'm going to zoom into this image here, just up here in the sky. And right now it looks like blue sky. There shouldn't be anything overly obvious to you. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the contrast. I'm going to make it really obvious uh, what these pixels are doing. I'm going to click on curves. Now, you don't need to actually follow along or know what I'm doing. Just watch and learn. I'm going to increase the whites and decrease the darks. And can you see that? So what you see here is JPEG compression at its finest. You can see all these little bands of color in here and all these little pixels, and everything looks really, really bad. Now this time, I'm going to open up the exact same image. The difference here is that rather than saving it as a JPEG inside of the raw processor, I simply opened it up in Photoshop. Now I'd like for you to see exactly what's going to happen. I'm going to take the same curve that gave it that contrast, and I'm going to drag and drop it on top of this image. I'm going to zoom in to 200% so that we match the other image. Now when I slide it down, you can clearly see the difference between this JPEG image and this raw image. So now in this example, you can see all that pixelization that's happening. And this is from a single save. You need to keep in mind, every time you save a JPEG, it does this more and more meaning it's going to mix more of these colors every time you save it, and it's going to continue to look worse. So that's one of the big reasons why we aren't actually going to be using JPEGs. Now, the other reason that we aren't going to use JPEGs is the banding. If you look up in this image, you should be able to see that there's bands that are happening. Now, it's very obvious inside of this JPEG because of the compression that happened. So I'm going to slide this image out of the way. Now, I'm going to use this image here. At 100%, it is currently 8-bit. Now, as an 8-bit image, you look at this, and it looks pretty good. Now, I don't know if you can actually see it, and this will depend on the compression of the video or whatever, but you should be able to see some level of banding that happens. It might be subtle, but basically, you should be able to see um, different steps of blue as it's going around. And this is a limitation of the 8-bit bit depth. Basically, with an 8-bit bit depth, it can only handle 256 shades of gray per channel. And the channels are red, green, and blue. Again, you don't have to overthink this type of thing, but I'm simply illustrating for you that you may, or may not, depending on the video, see some banding that happens within this image. Now, I'm going to take another image that is the exact same image. This time, instead of coming out of the raw processor as 8-bit, now I'm going to come out as 16-bit. 16-bit uh, is no longer 256 shades of gray. Now it's 65,000 shades of gray. So ultimately, it just looks a whole lot better when it comes to banding because it has more shades of gray that it can create a smoother gradation. Now, I'm not 100% positive if you can see the shift or, or not, but you should, in theory anyway, be able to see this image below without banding, as I do, and this top image with banding, as I do. Again, you might not, 
So if you have a really busy image of, let's say, a tree or flowers or something, you're not necessarily going to see this type of banding. But when you have a big blue sky, it can often be clear as day. And that's exactly what we're going to try and avoid by using 16-bit depth instead of 8-bit depth. Now, the reason that I bring this up is because JPEGs are only 8-bit. Okay, that's, that's all they can do. That's part of their compression algorithm is, once again, the best way to remove colors is to get rid of the 65,000 and simply give you the 256. And then it starts compressing from there. So that, that's yet another limitation of the JPEGs. And that's really all you need to get from this particular video is that whether you're working with the 8-bit image or the 16-bit image, ultimately a JPEG is doing that. And you don't want that. Now the question is, when are JPEGs good? Obviously every camera supports them. Well, here's the thing. If you have a camera that can support RAW, use RAW. Obviously you're going to get a better looking image. However, the only time you may actually want to use JPEG even on a high-end camera that can handle RAW is going to be something that's very fast. For example, a sporting event when you're trying to take like 100 shots at once, you know, an auto burst mode type of thing. And that's when you would use JPEGs where you're more interested in the content than you are in the details. Then again, there are some cameras that are fast enough that can actually handle taking that many pictures for an extended period of time. Now, you are always going to get more JPEGs out of it. For example, you might get 12 RAWs or 6 RAWs or 3 RAWs. It really all depends on the camera. But if you can use RAW for what you're doing, use RAW. If you have to use JPEG, then use JPEG. Just know that you're sacrificing quality in order to do that.